Warning, warning, this video might contain high residue of feminist material. Please proceed with caution. Hi everybody, hello, no gas. So we... Hi Gil. We want to talk today about the four queens, rulers, ladies, lordesses and the unique challenges that they face that are different from those that men face, from what we know about this political system, about this world, Westeros, mm -hmm. and about real human history. You and your trusted advisors, and you sit around making your plans on how to defeat a man you don't know. Does it ever once occur to you that I might have some insight? Throughout the, the show, we've seen this kind of like transformation from a very patriarchal society, like uh, the war between uh, uh, five kings, and, uh, right. and then it became like the war between queens, and uh, then John became king of the north. But and now the man is going to overtake, uh, wants to overtake all the women, now you are the heir. You're the true king. Daenerys is our queen, she shouldn't be. Yeah, we'll see. Like, we'll see about that, if he wants to or doesn't want to, but uh, definitely it's, uh, it's there. But he, but he gets the precedence. So by yeah. law, mm -hmm. males are superior to females. Rickon is Ned Stark's true-born son, which makes him a greater threat to Ramsay than you, a bastard, or me, a girl. That was questioned, like, in the last season also, between Sansa and John, should he get the precedent? Right. He's mar he was marginalized as a bastard and she was marginalized as a woman. Right. Who is more, uh, who is more privileged? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. It started by seeing some of the dilemmas that uh, the, the queens are facing. I mean, Cersei, I think, is the best example. I was hoping we could talk in private. I think that uh, what we saw in the last episode was a bit tragic. You want to whore by one? But first, I'm gonna fuck the queen. She realized that she had to, you know, to go by the cliches of like, if you want to get an ally, get a man, you have to put out, right? I mean, that was what right. Euron was like uh, insinuating. He right. was uh, insisting. <laughs> and if you want to keep him, then you have to get pregnant or at least, you know, make him believe <laughs> that the child you're carrying is his. And, and she is an expert of making men think that uh, they are the fathers of her brother's babies. <laughs> so she knows It's a very specific expertise. Yeah, she knows exactly when to sleep with them in time in order for them to believe oh, that, uh, you this know... This is very sad. It was very sad, very sad. See. Right, so for a man... That wouldn't happen because he doesn't uh, carry uh, the baby in his womb. His womb serves no purpose. It's just, uh, it's just there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As far as I know. Like his nipples. <laughs> what purpose did they serve? Who knows, you know? This is a man's what? You're still here. Yes. Why? And then we see also the difference between Danny and Sansa. I mean, Danny is a great conqueror. Right? Right. But Sansa is like, I think th that you were the one who said that, that she is really great at, uh, you know, what comes the day after. Mm -hmm. I mean, she is the one who thinks about the future. She, she's right. like the sustainer. Either the dead will defeat the living, in which case all our troubles come to an end, or life will win out. And what then? I could really see also what she learned from Littlefinger in this episode. I mean, even, you know, just the fact that she could imagine what happens after. He t kept telling her, you have to imagine every scenario possible. Everything is happening at once, blah, blah, blah. You know, right. and how can we, you know, survive? But she didn't think about two dragons in Dothraki and Salit coming yeah, over. Yeah, she didn't see that coming. Burb loser! <laughs> you know, so you have the conquerors and you have the people that try to sustain things, we know that Danny is not very good at it. You weren't made to sit on a chair in a palace. What was I made for? You're a conqueror, Daenerys Stormborn. I'm more of an expert than you, and I'll tell you why, because I'm a guy. So if we go over some of the most powerful and influential female rulers, even they had to experience challenges that are uniquely uh, female. 
Mm -hmm. So, for example... But you have but no plan. Educate. Oh, I do. Secretary, in fact, you I have, have no plan. a book about it. So, for example, Elizabeth I, Queen of England. So she was, she was known as the Virgin Queen. It was very important because she was unmarried, went unmarried, mm -hmm. in order to keep the suitors uh, interested. Mm -hmm. They had to, to, to push the story that she's married to the, to the kingdom and all of the, or her subjects are her husbands, to push that, uh, that, uh, that pure image of her. Mm -hmm. And uh, if she indeed had all kinds of lovers, then uh, please uh, don't talk about that. If that was, if the roles were reversed, I don't think a virgin king is, <laughs> is an attractive uh, uh, image or brand. This is something uniquely female. <laughs> the virgin king! <laughs> Are you a virgin? <laughs> Are you a virgin? Yeah, yeah not, not since I was 10. And this is something for you that we've been talking about and we have yet to mention uh, on a video. Now you have the stage. There are uh, speculations made by historians that the reason that uh, Elizabeth did not want to marry anyone is because her mentor, uh, Philip Seymour, I think was his Hoffman. name? Hoffman, yeah. <laughs> no, no, Thomas Seymour. He's like a little finger sort of character. Mm. He abused her sexually, and that's why she didn't want to have sex anymore. So you want to share your, yeah. your theory about Sansa? I have a very dark theory about Sansa. I hope you're sitting down. Oh God, it's very horrible even to say it out loud, but uh, I, I suspect that uh, when she was with Ramsay, I mean, he performed a clitorectomy, that's what I suspect, because it's uh, something that uh, is insinuated throughout the show. How? By whom? When she met with Littlefinger for the first time. Did he cut you? He did what he liked with the rest of me, as long as I could still give him an air. I can still feel it. I don't mean in my tender heart, it still pains me so. I can still feel what he did in my body standing here right now. Why? Is it so painful to even think about? There are eunuchs in the show. Mm -hmm. It was horrible when Theon uh, went through what he went through. Mm -hmm. But just the thought of it is just very hard to, to bear. I think it's because uh, she can still serve as an instrument, like as an object. I as mean, a political object? As a political object, as like a... a you vessel? Know, a vessel, right, for a childbirth and everything. But her ability to enjoy sex is, like, ruined. It's more cruel. It's more cruel because... Uh, more crueler. Uh, uh, yeah, because Varys and, you know, Theon and uh, Solid, no one can use them in that way, you know, and she can be, she uh, still be used. I mean, it's really something that, you know, she's, she'll be used for other people's enjoyment, not for her own. Okay, so you've said it, it's out there. It's out there. Ah, yeah, so yeah, dark. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, so there's also a Queen Victoria of the Victorian age uh, in England. Mm -hmm. She also had an interesting uh, thing. So when she became queen, uh, she was 18, I think, or something like that, and she wasn't married. She mm -hmm. was still unmarried. So, because, so the, the, the social norms uh, in the Victorian era, she had to live with her mother. She could not live by herself. The queen! Mm -hmm. The queen had to live with her mother. Mm -hmm. A king does not have to live with his mother. So that's uh, kind of uh, funny. Yeah. And uh, Tsarina, Katarina from uh, Russia, mm -hmm. one of the greatest uh, Russian uh, rulers uh, ever, maybe the greatest, the go like, uh, uh, golden age of Russia, she did a coup d'etat against her husband. She was uh, Prussian, whatever, married into the royalty. Mm -hmm from a coup d'etat, surrounded herself with a lot of males, generals, a lot of testosterone, and still was considered by some a usurper because after her husband, whatever, died, it was the, the, the throne should have gone to her son before her. So this is kind of a similar uh, instance between John and Daenerys. Why is the son ahead of the sister, mm -hmm. but the daughter is not ahead of a brother? 
Well, we know why. People with power don't like to share power. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, if you have power, then you want to keep the power. So you mm -hmm. marry within the family, so you don't let people from other nationalities, other genders, all kinds of... Uh... Yeah. Sansa thinks she's smarter than everyone. She's the smartest person I've ever met. And think about how much Sansa has to be smarter than everybody else in order to stay or to be on top. If she were a man and she were, were also able to fight, mm -hmm. then she'll be super formidable. So she has to be the smartest person that uh, Arya ever knew. She can't be just like uh, smart. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. the smartest person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Right, yeah, that you don't have to be out of the ordinary in order to be successful. You know, that the first person that comes into mind when it comes to ladies and getting recognition of their own, uh, you know, abilities mm -hmm. and their own talents mm -hmm. is Jessica Benjamin. In her book, The Bonds of Love, she mm -hmm. basically takes uh, the concept of like the Hegelian master-slave dialectics, like uh, Herrschaft and uh, Bondschaft. Okay. And uh, uh, explain this dialect. Basically, Take. what uh, Hegel says is that uh, there will always be a master-slave dichotomy. Dynamic. Dynamic, yeah. Okay. And uh, in which each one of them will try to get recognition from the other. The master will try to get recognition from the slave that they are the master, and the slave will try to re get recognition from the master that they are a subject, they're not just an object. Ah, okay. But Hegel said that there will always be a mutual failure in that sense, because the battle between slave and master will always be a battle to the death. To the death? I accept. <laughs> you know, one of them has to win, the other one has to lose. Because and if the if the slave is a subject, then the master is not a master? Like there are situations when there, when there is a physical death also. But there is also like the, the problem is that the master can never get true recognition from a slave because he's just a slave. I mean, I can't, you know, I can't appreciate his opinion because right. he's nothing to me. Uh -huh. And the slave can't ever get recognition from the master because the master can't afford to give recognition to the slave because then he will have to question right. the whole social order, etc. So how do you relate that to the... To so, the issue at hand. Uh, I mean, uh, Jessica Benjamin, she uh, disagreed with Hegel in a way. Like she said that mutual... Is that allowed for a woman? Yeah, uh, yeah it is allowed. Sorry. Uh, and, uh, no, it's okay. But, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, it, he, she did say that uh, mutual recognition can happen. Like, she says that as long as women uh, were more able to prove themselves, mm. I mean, more given space to prove themselves in different spheres, then gradually it will become much more equal because it depends on the process of mutual recognition. And if I recognize the other person as a subject, okay. I don't have to also worry all the time that they will take my place, right? Mm. And, you know, because I also see that they recognize me as a subject. So we can be just subjects together. We right. don't have to be right. in a certain hierarchy. So with Yara, she's the a very tough, tough woman yeah, and, fighter, and fighter, people don't mess with her. And uh, maybe in this sense, uh, she was a bit protected by uh, uh, being a lesbian and um, she's a bit out of the game and that allows her to make her own rules in a way. Like she doesn't have to see who she's gonna marry. And I mean, even Euron is still in the game, you know, he's like, I'm gonna marry her, I'm gonna do right. this. And, but she's out of the game and uh, Maybe it's also that just like the, the unconscious thought that something that is penetrated is weak. Yeah, I mean, there is a, 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 like a, a school of uh, feminists that uh, say that... Uh, every... They have their own schools? Like... Let's say... Well. If you've made it up to here, congratulations. If you want to keep watching, please make sure you are not allergic to high-density feminist ideas. Please consult your doctor before going on any further. You have been warned. That say that like every, uh, every sexual encounter is rape uh, because there is penetration. Okay. And uh, that the only way to be a true feminist is to only be with women. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah.
I mean, uh, it does make it does make sense in a way. <laughs> I, th I think but, it's uh, like I don't uh, agree with it in my life, but uh, yeah. We should just change the way we we view things instead of yeah. uh, just everybody being lesbian. I think. No, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think this is what is what's changing now because they said that because of the power differential, then you can never see something truly as consent. You know, as long as men are much more powerful. Uh, than women socially and financially, then every encounter is infused with those power relations. So it's always rape in a way, like even if the... I think so many people are triggered now. So, so many, many people, people are triggered, are triggered wow. yes. Triggered well, everywhere. Well, you know, yeah. Just, uh, it's, you know, one way of looking at things. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Relax. Relax, you know. <laughs> we're here about diversity right. of ideas. And we're just talking. So maybe if we, if we take Yara and being other gay, maybe... And, and combine that with the clitorectomy and Sansa maybe being a virgin queen in some way, mm -hmm. she will take herself out of the game mm -hmm. and that will also give her the independence. And we see here, there is another queen who is not out of the game. She brings a man over, boom. Daenerys is our queen. She shouldn't be. That's treason. It's the truth. The guy is gonna usurp her in some ways gonna threaten her power. Right. So Sansa also maybe will see that and say, no, if I marry someone, mm -hmm. I will be his wife. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. No, she has been there, she's done that, and uh, it didn't turn out very well. Right, so the first thing that a contender to the throne, a male contender to the throne has to do is marry a woman. The last thing that a female contender to the throne has to do is right. marry a man. Right, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. And speaking of, uh, of uh, females and males, did you know, you, maybe you did because I told you, but in the past year, the percentage of our female uh, viewership has grown by 50%. Wow. We have more than a third of our viewers are females. And I think from what I know from other channels, that could be like twice or three times as much as uh, other channels and sometimes even more than that. And I think you should get uh, some of the credit for that. Thank you. Yeah, cool. And I should get uh, most of the credit for that for putting you here. Yes. Paying you starvation, starvation wages. 30% less than you pay your uh, male collaborators. <laughs> exactly, to the dime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so thank you, patrons, and thank you, female viewers, for this is not working anymore. Female <laughs> viewers who are watching the show, males, don't be triggered. Everything's fine. Yeah. Boom. We, we love you. We love you. We love you. Come on. Some my, some of my best friends are male. Mine too. Some of my best fathers are also male. Hi, Dad. Bye, Dad. See you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. You know what I hear most often from new patrons coming into our Patreon page is that they've been enjoying the God Academy videos for a long time and that they're happy that they finally can support the channel. So you too can be happy. Happiness is just around the corner. It's on patreon.com slash God Academy. Bliss. It's just one cup of coffee a month. Come on. I like coffee.